family. I just had a new baby in April, so now I have two boys. Uh, both are future Alteryx users. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, who's using Alteryx at Honeywell. We'll, uh, I'll explain a little bit about what my digital finance team does. We'll obviously talk about a revenue forecast. Dan will work, walk us through some workflows. And then we'll touch on uh, what we're doing with predictives. So before we get started, uh, let me just give you a little background about Honeywell. We are a Fortune 100 company. And we manufacture way more products than you might think. You're probably most familiar with the thermostat that's in your home, says mm -hmm. Honeywell on it, way more than that. So we have um, products that are on virtually every commercial, defense, and space aircraft, driving safety through navigation, cockpit systems, and other mechanical components. We have building uh, automation technologies that are in over 10 million buildings, <coughs> working system integration, climate control, everything that you can think of to make that building more energy efficient. We have a very cool business, um, which is our industry, or a, a global leader really, in manufacturing performance chemical uh, and uh, materials that we're able to use to produce uh, clean fuels, plastics, and renewables. And then finally, we have our industry solutions business, which drives, uh, really enables a connected plant. Uh, we have a lot of sensor and scanning technologies that will help uh, any facility, any manufacturing plant, distribution plant become more efficient and more productive. So who's using Alteryx? Um, we are, finance. Uh, we are the front runners, and that is only because we forked out the money. So we get the we get the hog all the licenses. Uh, no, but like I said, for the last four years, um, when we first got introduced to Alteryx, we immediately saw uh, initial benefits, and we saw how quickly it, it enabled us to deploy solutions. So we quickly started charging forward with that. Um, as we were able to evolve, and if you heard me this morning talk about an enterprise server, and we started to see more growth and get others engaged as well. What I find um, interesting about this chart is information technology. I mean, they've always had all the tools, yet they're using Alteryx. So that just tells me uh, that they, they get it. They understand the usefulness of the tool. They understand the benefits that it's providing for their business partners, me, uh, and, and they're working with us. So it's great to see um, the distribution across all businesses, or excuse me, all functions. Now, I've often said uh, to my boss and other leaders um, that the secret to my team's success is Alteryx because it allows us to unlock the data. We are, our aerospace business is fortunate enough to have 99% of our revenue on a single ERP. So we have SAP and we have a data warehouse, SAP HANA. So we are fortunate enough to have that. However, if any of you have ever worked uh, financial systems deployment, you'll find out that inevitably it doesn't align with the way the business wants to look at their data or how they quote unquote run their business. And we are, um, we, we fall into the same boat. So we utilize Alteryx to ensure that our data is aligned for the way our business leaders want to see it. And we've had a lot of successful projects uh, by developing free cash flow and working capital by product. Um, We've supported our sales incentive programs. We've had a great project with uh, supporting our tax department. Um, and we actually had a situation where they were working on one of their tax submissions and they were ready to cut a PO with the consulting firm to do the data extraction manipulation, help them prepare that data so they can submit it. And I got to talking with one of the uh, one of the gentlemen in the tax group. And I said, "Well, let me take a look at it." And our team talked through it. And I actually took an analyst new to my team, new to Honeywell, who they were new three months. They had zero experience with Alteryx, very first project, and they were able to develop what was needed to satisfy the tax group's needs with extracting the information, transforming it, and then get it into the right format so we could submit. Um, <laughs> And we ended up 
cutting the requisition. So we canceled the requisition and that saved us $140,000. So if there's any consultants out there, please. Um, and I guess if I ever leave Honeywell, I'm gonna go into tax consulting. So, so our digital transformation um, and my digital initiatives that, that we drive is all around automation, self-service, direct access. What I don't want is to see our finance analysts um, manipulating information, manipulating data in Excel and access. We had a CFO uh, that would say that we didn't go to business school uh, to manipulate information, we went to business school so we can do analytics and make better business decisions or help our business partners make better business decisions. So that's what we try and do. And the way I talk through this is uh, just use the analogy of building a house. So um, you first need to have a foundation and IT provides us with that. They provide us with that initial data layer within our HANA data warehouse. Um, but then you have your framers and you have your finishers. And for us, in my team, we are the framers. So we act as the liaison between our IT developers and our GBAs and our finance partners. My group of 10 is uh, made up of all um, folks that have a finance or accounting background, and we just have a technical or data aptitude and interest. So that enables us to really understand what, what we're trying to do within finance, and then also communicate with IT to make sure that we have the right data. And if we don't, then we build that up, we frame that up. What we wanna do is let the report building, the visualizations, put that in the hands of our functional finance groups. Um, what I would like to see is then go ahead and develop that and then find the best use cases that can be enterprise standards and then promote them as such. I mean, if everyone came to me and said, Joe, I, I need you to build me this report, first thing I say to them is, you don't ask me to build anything in Excel, so you shouldn't ask me to build anything in Tableau or business objects, or whatever the case may be. Um, but then the other situation is that if you think about it, I'd be going back to like IT 15 years ago. I just don't have the bandwidth to do it. Now, it doesn't always work that way. Uh, certainly, we have projects where the CFO comes to me and says, Joe, we need this. And uh, we're rallying the troops. We put together the data, the data model, and then we put together the visualizations. And then we hand that off to our finance partners, and they go promote it and distribute it amongst our businesses. Um, so just to kind of talk through a little bit more around our, our data evolution, as I mentioned, we have a data warehouse, SAP HANA. Um, nothing new, I think, to anybody in the room, but business objects is a great data extraction tool. Uh, in finance, most of our analysts and managers and geez, even our directors, they're exporting data from business objects and they're manipulated in Excel and Access, and I don't want them to do that. So we're using Alteryx uh, to do the data manipulation. Uh, we use Alteryx to do the prototyping and then pilot solutions. And once we know that we have a solution that is viable and it is, in fact, an enterprise solution, we then work with IT, get it, uh, work with the Scrum Master, get it staged up in a sprint, and then they do the development there. And that could be you know, something as simple as just adding a couple fields to an existing view, creating a whole new view, or doing some additional ETL in their environment. And when they do that, then we decommission our Alteryx workflow because I don't want to continue administrating something because every um, new, everything that I have to continue to administrate takes away time that I could be developing something new and driving business value. So for us, data governance is important and all my governance uh, is easily controlled in SAP by our existing IT processes, so I don't have to touch it. So I always want to go back around full circle. So let's talk about our uh, forecast. I think that's why everyone's here. So uh, improving our quarterly forecast was, it seemed like a, an unattainable feat. Um, what we have, if you think about you know, all of your businesses, everyone has a quarterly forecast, it's you know, promoted Wall Street. Well, as we go through, what we do supports what gets communicated to the street. So um, we had a process, we were running through this thing every week because we had to be on point. In finance, accuracy is everything. Uh, the unfortunate piece of it, or the downside is, we had over 25 different analysts supporting 100 different sites. We were uh, slicing the data or grouping it uh, across 35 different businesses a lot of manual processing. 
uh, a lot of redundant processing, uh, and then a lot of stuff that just wasn't even the same. So that was an area that we said we could drive a lot of productivity, we could get the data transformation out of our analyst hands, and get them to spend time on doing the actual analytics. So uh, what we did was uh, we set off on a path to automate this whole process. Now, don't let the simplicity of this slide fool you. Um, I think I was when I first met with the teams. I think we were sold a bag of rotten goods. Um, but basically what we do is, because we are lucky enough to have that ERP, we go and grab whatever we can from, that, from our ERP system. So we're grabbing our revenue information, our shipments, and then our firm orders. Now there are some aspects of uh, our forecasts that just require some data cleansing or manipulation, and that happens within our PSYOP. So uh, about a day after we pull our automated feeds, uh, we get a manual input. Uh, and then we bring that through Altrix, we consolidate, we transform, and then we output that to SBase, uh, which is required for our financial submissions. And then we also output that to Tableau, which is what we use for our consumption. So uh, Altrix, as I mentioned earlier, is the secret to our success. That's what we use to transform our forecast uh, and pull it all together. So I'll turn it over to Dan uh, to take us through the details. Thanks, Joe. I'd like to talk a little bit about how we got the data first, and then I'll go through a few of the transformations that we do with the data. There's a lot of different things we do with it. I'll cover, uh, I'll cover three of those. So initially, we said, okay, we need a lot of data out of SCP. How are we going to get it out? Let's use business object because that's the tool that we have been using. So in doing so, um, we found that we needed to create multiple extracts to get all the data that we needed. Um, and uh, it, because we have a limit of like 250 megs per extract out of SAP, that was uh, given to us by our IT department. I think SAP may recommend like 20 to 50 uh, meg files, so they increased it for us, but that still wasn't enough for us to get all the data we needed. So we created multiple extracts, and in doing so, found that by using the Excel format, we could get more data out than using the CSV file and thus requiring less files. Um, so once we get the files out, we then used Altrix to union the files back together again. It worked out really well that way. And then we set up um, the extracts to run each week through uh, business objects to get it semi-automated. Um, we then transitioned to, um, so the takeaway here is be creative if you're using Oracle or some other uh, data sources, data warehouses, uh, be creative and you can do it. Uh, we, next, we automated our, uh, our processes by using NDB connections through Altrix, where you can connect right up to SAP HANA, and we're able to pull in the data uh, lightning fast. They, our workflows run a lot faster. They're more reliable with less moving parts. Uh, for example, if we had to add another field, we have our analysts come back and say, I need another field in our, in our data set. Go in and, and do that you know, with business objects. It would take, we'd have to put it in there, drag the field over, and you know, you know, business objects takes a little bit more to do. But with uh, the HANA connections, we basically just more or less, you know, select that field to bring in, and it, and we could get it in our data sets. Um, now I'll talk a little bit about the transformations that we are doing within Altrix. Um, the first one is we, I'll show you a workflow that we're doing forecasting logic. Um, one of the one of the workflows we have is to forecast our book and turn orders. Um, book and turn order is an order that comes in within the within the quarter and then we sell it that quarter. It's different than having an order already in your system saying that's going to ship this quarter. And our uh, short range forecast we're talking here is to forecast a specific quarter. Um, we worked with uh, 24 of our analysts and found there's multiple methods on how they were uh, forecasting book and turn. And we ultimately narrowed it down to three methods. And then with the uh, Altrix workflow, we're now all using the same logic for that, for that book and turn workflow. I'll show you uh, that workflow right now. So here's, a, here's the workflow for the book and turn that we have. We basically uh, bring in the data 
and we exclude inter and intra company out of the data set. Um, we're filtering it for, you know, based on the revenue segments. But I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I'm not sure we have a lot of time for it. But as you can see here, we would have um, meet and there'd be another, let's fine tune the workflow. So uh, Altrix allowed us to perfect the workflow and add quality and increase the, uh, the probability of it, you know, being accurate that we've added here. And this is kind of standard through the workflow. It kind of added to it as we went along. So we're still, we have a, we have a process for doing that. So it's your basic rolling average forecast, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> The next thing I'd like to show in our workflows is some of the user validation checks that we do. Um, we have email alerts, and we also check against master data. Um, so we'll jump out to another workflow for that. So we'll go to the forecast demand workflow. This is the workflow that we get from uh, our ISC or uh, supply chain. They provide this file, and um, we don't know how they're they're getting it. You know, we they may put in values in, in the files that are not uh, you know, on our master data tables. So we need to do a lot of checks with the data compared to if we got a file from SAP. So one of the checks that we we're doing here is uh, as the data comes in, we check the record counts to see that there's not just a header record in there, there's actual data in there. Um, sometimes we'll get a, a business objects file, we'll see the date and times on there, but no data in it. So this is kind of checking it and it sends an email if there's no alert, if there's no data in the file. These other ones are just, uh, we summarize it if we need to validate the data. That's one of the checks that we do. Another one we do on all our workflows is under the Configuration Events tab. We have it uh, enabled to send an email alert if the workflow fails to run on the schedule. So um, if we go to Edit here, you can easily set up email alerts by uh, you know, selecting the checkbox. And then we have it set to run after with alerts. It sends the email to the primary uh, workflow owner and the, the backup, and then we just leave the defaults here. So if the, the workflow runs and it, there's an error in it, um, I'll show you an example of that. It'll send an email out. Let me show you. So here's an example of what the email looks like. It's, we just basically kind of take the default email, tells us what workflow is running, um, and then it also tells us what, was, what it was doing some of the steps that it was doing, and then usually toward the end, we'll see that there's where the error is. And so here, it's showing us the error was due to a open file. So the file was, you know, was open, so it couldn't process the workflow fully. So um, to, the solution for that is, you know, close the, the file that's open, and then rerun the workflow. I just created that as an example to show you how, how you know, it would error out. But there can be all, all other cases of why it would air out. But that's that's just one example. We typically don't see that happening, um, but we do have that check on there. There's all a lot of anymore. anymore. Happening anymore. Yeah. The process will be more mature now. So then um, another another um, option that we have is under the runtime configuration tab, we have it checked to cancel running workflows on air. So um, if it was, if it did find an error somewhere, we were finding that, you know, in the first minute, it, there may be an error, but it wouldn't send us an email for another 10 or 15 minutes. So in order for us to um, be able to fix it quicker, we check this box, and then after a minute, if it sees an error, it'll send us that alert. Otherwise, it would kind of finish trying to run the workflow and then send the alert kind of later. So that helps us get that alert quicker. That's another, another thing that we do. Um, another thing that we do on, on the, uh, with the data to check it is, um, I don't know, if maybe I can make this bigger. We uh, check the data. So if they put in a material number in their file, and we check that, that, that it's on our master data table. So we basically join to that table, and then where camp doesn't find a match, it'll, we summarize the data. And we show the uh, basically we show the fields, um, the material number, material number description, uh, the revenue and cost amounts, and then send it to an Excel file. That's an a validation file that they can then open and see any any errors that uh, 
in the data. So if they put a part number and mistype it or whatever, it doesn't stop our forecast process. We don't say, oh, we can't use it. The process still flows along and goes into our uh, data sets. And we can see what those are in our you know, Tableau dashboards. But they do have, have this. We don't have errors in, in, with this anymore. Now that you know, this is initially when we set up the files to come in. So now that that we have that feedback loop, that we really don't get errors like this anymore. But we still have the checks and the workflows. Um, so that's another example. We have throughout different dimensional checks like that here. So the Excel file, basically, if there's anything in the Excel file, that means there was some type of an error. So if we look at the Excel file, we do material validation, some other dimensional checks, and those are all blank, meaning there's no. There's no errors, so the file, the data is clean. So that's some of the cleansing that we do there. Um, another thing that we do within our workflows is we create files for load to S space, and so I'll show you that um, section. So for the load to S space, we basically turn down the number of fields that we're going to send because we want S space to be summarized. And then we summarize the data. And then we remove any zeros from the data to make it a smaller data set for a, lo a quicker load to S space. And then create a uh, text file for S space load. And that works pretty well for us. Um, these are all finance. Um, developed workflows um, that, autom that we automated and replaced a lot of uh, manual processes. <laughs> having, having the detail to back up your forecast is very valuable. Here's a list of our 24 workflows. Um, we have them organized by the initiatives. So <coughs> SRO is for short range forecast, that's the forecast. And then it's uh, in numeric order for the firing order of the workflows that they would need to run. We have uh, what version it's on, and then we'll use the word test in the workflow name if we're using it as a test. Any um, workflows that are old will move out into like an archive folder. So that's just our current way we're doing it. So um, the, this allows us, we have multiple workflows here because it allows us to divide and conquer. If we want to have a team member work with a group on trying to tune that workflow and perfect it, they can do that really good way of doing that. Um, after going to the conference, we had a couple in our group that went to the, uh, the Inspire uh, conference last year and came back and said, you know, hey, let's look at using macros. So right away, um, we incorporated macros within uh, these workflows here. And with the macros, it, uh, you basically write the code once and it's reusable in all the different workflows. So um, one of these uh, macros, for instance, they went back and were, it's kind of a complicated macro, and they had to keep changing it. So instead of going into each of the workflows and you know, tediously you know, trying to get those exact same field sets in there, having this macro saved us a lot of time there. And I can show you an example of that macro. So in this, in this macro, we bring in a set of fields. And, and this is because the, the business needs to look at some of their sub-businesses in a certain way. So a lot of times they'll say, if it's this part number and this customer, then I would need to have it in this group. And these, this group of people would you know, own it and they can manage and track it. Um, or it's, if it's a customer part site combination. So it goes through a lot of uh, different steps to uh, come up with this um, the hierarchy on how they want to look at the data. So uh, I'll just show you the, the high level forecast data flow. So we bring in the SAP HANA data, system inputs, manual files. They all come into Alteryx. Then from there, we summarize the data and send it to SBase, and then we send the details to SAP HANA. From there, we end up sending the, uh, the data for the summary forecast and adjustments with commentary and details into T 
have low for consumption. Our analysts will, will look at um, look at the, the forecast and then can come back around and supply <coughs> any adjustments and commentary. This is very valuable to know. We just built a forecast based on the data that we're collecting, you know, from the systems forecast. Now they can go in and say, I'm going to make adjustments to it. And, they, and we want to know what those adjustments are so that down the road we can say, can we program that as well through Alteryx? What are these adjustments that you're making? Is it something that we can then? So there's always more things we can do to make the forecast better. Um, they also will put commentary in as to you know, what are the differences from my prior with prior forecast. A lot of different things they can put in the commentary. With that, I'll turn it back over to Joe. Yeah, so just to, to highlight a couple things here is the, you, can set, you can tell uh, that my initial slide on this, super simple, 